The Sundanese, Sundanese Fu Rong Sunda, are an Austronesian ethnic group native to the western part of the Indonesian island of Java. They number approximately 40 million, and form Indonesia's second most populous ethnic group, after the neighboring Javanese. In their language, Sundanese, the Sundanese refer to themselves as Urang Sunda, Sundanese, Sunda people, while Orang Sunda or Suku Sunda is its Indonesian equivalent. The Sundanese have traditionally been concentrated in the provinces of West Java, Banten, Jakarta, and the western part of Central Java. Sundanese migrants can also be found in Lampung and South Sumatra, and to lesser extent in Central Java and East Java. Etymology The name Sunda derives from the Sanskrit prefix su which means goodness or possessing good quality. The example is Suvarna, lit. Good color. Used to describe gold, Sunda is also another name for Hindu god Vishnu. In Sanskrit, the term Sundara masculine, or Sundari feminine, means beautiful or excellence. The term Sunda also means bright, light, purity, cleanness and white. Origins and history Migration theories the Sundanese are of Austronesian origins who are thought to have originated in Taiwan, migrated though the Philippines, and reached Java between 1500 BC and 1000 BC. Nevertheless, there is also a hypothesis that argues that the Austronesian ancestors of contemporary Sundanese people originally came from Sundaland, a sunken massive peninsula that today forms the Java Sea, the Malacca and Sunda Straits, and the islands between them. According to recent genetic study, Sundanese, together with Javanese and Balinese has almost equal ratio of genetic marker shared between Austronesian and Austroasiatic heritages. Origin myth The Sunda Wibitan belief contains the mythical origin of Sundanese people, Sang Hyang Kursa, the supreme divine being an ancient Sundanese belief created seven Bataras deities, in Sasaka Pusaka Wana, the sacred place on earth. The oldest of these Bataras is called Batara Sikkal and is considered the ancestor of the Kanakis people. Other six Bataras ruled various locations in Sunda lands in western Java. A Sundanese legend of Sankurang contained the memory of the prehistoric ancient lake in Bandung Basin Highland, which suggests that Sundanese already inhabit the region since Mesolithic era, at least 20,000 years ago. Another popular Sundanese proverb and legend mentioned about the creation of Parahyangan Priangan highlands, the heartland of Sundanese realm. When the Hyang's gods were smiling, the land of Parahyangan was created. This legend suggested the Parahyangan highland as the playland or the abode of gods, as well as suggesting its natural beauty. Hindu-Buddhist Kingdoms Era the earliest historical polity which appeared in the Sundanese realm in the western part of Java was the kingdom of Tarumanagara, which flourished between the 4th and 7th century. Hindu influences reached the Sundanese people as early as the 4th century CE as is evident in Tarumanagara inscriptions. The adoption of this Dharmic faith in Sundanese way of life was, however, never as intense as their Javanese counterparts. It seems that despite the central court beginning to adopt Hindu-Buddhist culture and institution, the majority of common Sundanese still retained their native natural and ancestral worship. By the 4th century, the older megalithic culture was probably still alive and well next to the penetrating Hindu influences. Court cultures flourished in ancient times, for example, during the era of Sunda Kingdom, however the Sundanese appear not to have had the resources nor desire to construct large religious monuments similar to those built by Javanese in Central and East Java. The traditional rural Sundanese method of rice farming, by Ladang or Huma, dry rice farming, in contrast to Javanese irrigated Sawa wet rice cultivation that require complex administration, coordination, and a lot of labor forces, also contributed to small populations of sparsely inhabited Sundanese villages. Geographic constraints that isolate each region also led Sundanese villages to enjoy their simple way of life and their independence even more. That was probably the factor that would contribute to the carefree nature, egalitarian, conservative, independent and somewhat individualistic social outlook of Sundanese people. The Sundanese seem to love and revere their nature in spiritual ways, leading to them adopting some taboos in order to conserve the nature and maintain the ecosystem. 
the conservative tendency and their somewhat opposition to foreign influences, is demonstrated in extreme isolationist measures adopted keenly by Kanakis or Badwi people. They have rules against interacting with outsiders and adopting foreign ideas, technology, and ways of life. They have also set some taboos, such as not cutting trees nor harming forest creatures, in order to conserve their natural ecosystem. One of the earliest historical records that mentions the name Sunda appears in the Sanghyang Tapak inscription dated 952 Saka, 1030 CE, discovered in Sabotic, near Sukabumi. In 1225, a Chinese writer named Cho Ju Kua, in his book Chu Fan Kai, describes the port of Sin Ti. O. Sunda, which probably refers to the port of Banton or Kalapa. By examining these records, it seems that the name Sunda started to appear in the early 11th century as a Javanese term used to designate their western neighbors. A Chinese source more specifically refers to it as the port of Banton or Sunda Kelapa. After the formation and consolidation of the Sunda Kingdom, S. Unity and identity during the Pajajaran era under the rule of Sri Baduga Maharaja, popularly known as King Siliwangi, the shared common identity of Sundanese people was more firmly established. They adopted the name Sunda to identify their kingdom, their people, and their language. Under Dutch rule Inland Pasundan is mountainous and hilly, and until the 19th century, was thickly forested and sparsely populated. The Sundanese traditionally live in small and isolated hamlets, rendering control by indigenous courts difficult. The Sundanese, in contrast to the Javanese, traditionally engage in dry field farming. These factors resulted in the Sundanese having a less rigid social hierarchy and more independent social manners. In the 19th century, Dutch colonial exploitation opened much of the interior for coffee, tea, and quinine production, and the Highland society took on a frontier aspect, further strengthening the individualistic Sundanese mindset. Contemporary era There is popular belief among Indonesian ethnicities that Sundanese are famous for their beauty, in his report. Summa Oriental on early 16th century Sunda Kingdom, Tomei Pires mentioned, The Sundanese women are beautiful, and those of the nobles chaste, which is not the case with those of the lower classes. It was said that Sundanese women are, in estimation of Indonesians, one of the most beautiful in the country. In Indonesian popular beliefs, it was said that because of the climate, they have lighter complexion than other Indonesians, and because the Sundanese diet features raw vegetables, they reputedly possess especially soft skin. Bondungite ladies, popularly known as Mojang Priangan are reputedly pretty, fashion smart and forward looking. Probably because of this, many Sundanese people today pursue careers in the Indonesian entertainment industry. Language. The Sundanese language is spoken by approximately 36 million people and is the second most widely spoken regional language in Indonesia, after Javanese. The 2000 Indonesia census put this figure at 30.9 million. This language is spoken in the southern part of the Banten province, and most of West Java and eastwards as far as the Pamali River in Breves, Central Java. Sundanese is also closely related to Malay and Minang as it is to Javanese, as seen by the Sundanese utilizing different language levels denoting rank and respect, a concept borrowed from the Javanese. Sundanese shares similar vocabularies with Javanese and Malay. There are several dialects of Sundanese, from the Sunda Bantan dialect to the Sunda Central Javanese dialect which mixes elements of Javanese. Some of the most distinct dialects are from Bantan, Bogor, Priangan, and Siriban. In Central Java, Sundanese is spoken in some of the Silicap region and some of the Breves region. It is known that the most refined Sundanese dialect, which is considered as its original form, are those spoken in Chamas, Tasik Malaya, Garut, Bandung, Sumadong, Sukabumi, and especially Chanjur. The dialect spoken by people living in Chanjur is considered as the most refined Sundanese. While Sundanese spoken on north coast, Banten and Siriban is considered less refined. While the language spoken by the people of Badwi is considered the archaic type of Sundanese language, before the Sundanese people adopt the concept of language stratification to denote rank and respect as demonstrated and influenced by Javanese. 
Today, the Sundanese language are mostly written in Latin script. An example of Sundanese language media is Mangal magazine that is written in Latin script. However, there is an effort to revive the Sundanese script which was used between the 14th and 18th centuries. For example, street names in Bandung and several cities in West Java are now written in both Latin and Sundanese scripts. Religion the initial religious systems of the Sundanese were animism and dynamism with reverence to ancestral Karuhan and natural spirits identified as Hyang, yet bears some traits of pantheism. The best indications are found in the oldest epic poems, Wawakan, and among the remote Badwi tribe. This religion is called Sunda Wivitan, early Sundanese. The rice agriculture had shaped the culture, beliefs and ritual system of traditional Sundanese people, among other the reverence to Nyai Pohachi Sanghyang Asri as the goddess of rice and fertility. The land of Sundanese people in western Java is among the earliest place in Indonesian archipelago that being exposed to Indian Hindu-Buddhist influences. Tarumanagara followed by Sunda Kingdom adopted Hinduism as early as the 4th century. The Batujaya Stupa complex in Karawang shows Buddhist influences in West Java, while Kangkwang Shivayak Temple near Garut shows Hindu influence. The 16th century sacred text Sanghyang Siksikanda ng Karijan contain the religious and moral rules, guidance, prescriptions, and lessons for ancient Sundanese people. Around the 15th to 16th centuries Islam began to spread among the Sundanese people by Indian Muslim traders, and its adoption accelerated after the fall of the Hindu Sunda Kingdom and the establishment of the Islamic Sultanates of Bantan and Siriban in coastal West Java. Numerous ulama, locally known as Kyai, penetrated villages in the mountainous regions of Parahyangan and established mosques and schools Pasantran, and spread the Islamic faith amongst the Sundanese people. Small traditional Sundanese communities retained their indigenous social and belief systems, adopting self-imposed isolation, and refused foreign influences, proselytism and modernization altogether, such as those of the Badwi Kanakis, people of inland Levick Regency. Some Sundanese villages such as those in Sigug or Kuningan retained their Sunda Wivitan beliefs, while some villages such as Kampung Naga in Tasik Malaya, and Sindang Barang Pasir Yura in Bogor, although identifying themselves as Muslim, still uphold pre-Islamic traditions and taboos and venerated the Karuhan ancestral spirits. Today, most Sundanese are Sunni Muslims. After Western Java fell under Dutch East India Company control in the early 18th century, and later under colonial Dutch East Indies control, Christian evangelism towards the Sundanese people was started by missionaries of Genutschap, or in Nuitwendige Zending Te Batavia, G.I.U.Z. This organization was founded by Mr. F. L. Anthing and Pastor E. W. King in 1851. However, it was Nederlandse Zendelings Vereniging NZV, which sent their missionaries to convert the Sundanese peoples. They started the mission in Batavia, later expanding into several towns in West Java such as Bandung, Chanjur, Siriban, Bogor and Sukabumi. They built schools, churches and hospitals for native people in West Java. Compared to the large Sundanese Muslim population, the numbers of Christian Sundanese are scarce. Today Christians in West Java are mostly Chinese Indonesian residing in West Java, with only small numbers of native Sundanese Christians. In contemporary Sundanese social and religious life, there is a growing shift towards Islamism, especially amongst urban Sundanese. Today, compared to the 1960s, many Sundanese Muslim women have decided to wear the hijab. The same phenomena was also found earlier in the Malay community in Sumatra and Malaysia. Indeed, modern history saw the rise of political Islam through the birth of Darul Islam Indonesia in Tasikmalaya, West Java, back in 1949, although later this Islamist movement was cracked down upon by the Indonesian Republic. In modern contemporary political landscapes, the Sundanese realm in West Java and Banten also provides popular support for Islamic parties such as Partai Kedalan Sagittara and Partai Persatuan Pembangunan. There are numbers of Sundanese ulama and Islamic preachers who have been quite successful in gaining national popularity, such as Kyai Abdullah Gymnastir and Mama Deda who have become TV personalities through their Dakwa show. There are an increasing number of Sundanese people who are considered the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca as something that enjoys social prestige. 
On the other side, there is also a growing movement led by the minority Sundanese conservative traditionalist Adat, the Sunda Wibitan community, who are struggling to achieve wider acceptance and recognition of their faith and way of life. Culture Family and social relations Sundanese culture has borrowed much from Javanese culture, however it differs by a much less rigid system of social hierarchy. The Sundanese, in their mentality and behavior, their greater egalitarianism and antipathy to yawning class distinctions, and their community-based material culture, differ from the feudal hierarchy apparent among the people of Javanese principalities. Central Javanese court culture nurtured an atmosphere conducive to elite, stylized, impeccably polished forms of art and literature. In a pure sense, Sundanese culture bore few traces of these traditions. Culturally Sundanese people adopt a bilateral kinship system, with male and female descent are of equal importance. In Sundanese families the important rituals revolved around life cycles, from birth to death, adopting many of the previous animist and Hindu-Buddhist, as well as Islamic traditions. For example, during the seventh month of pregnancy there is a prenatal ritual called Nuja Bulanan, identical to Naloni Matoni in Javanese tradition, which traces its origins to Hindu ritual. Shortly after the birth of a baby, a ritual called Akakahan, from Arabic word, Akika, is performed, an Islamic tradition in which the parents slaughter a goat for a baby girl or two goats for a baby boy, the meat later being cooked and distributed to relatives and neighbors. The circumcision ceremony is performed on prepubescent boys and celebrated with sisingan lion dance. The wedding ceremony is the highlight of Sundanese family celebration involving complex rituals from Naraskayan and Nundayan Among, marriage proposal and agreement conducted by parents and family elders, siraman, bridal shower, sesarahan, presenting wedding gifts for the bride, aka D. Nika, wedding vows, sawiran, throwing coins, mixed with flower petals and sometimes also candies, for the unmarried guests to collect and believe to bring better luck in romance, hoop linking, bride and groom feed each other by hand, with arms and Twine to symbolize love and affection, bakakak hayam, bride and groom ripping a grilled chicken through holding each of its leg, a traditional way to determine which one will dominate the family which is the one that get the larger or head part, and the wedding feast inviting whole family and business relatives, neighbors, and friends as guests. The death in a Sundanese family usually performed through a series of rituals in accordance with traditional Islam, such as the Pangajian, reciting Al-Quran, including providing burkat, rice box with side dishes for guests. The Quran recitation is performed daily, from the day of death through the seventh day following, later performed again on the fortieth day, a year, and one thousandth days after the death. However today this tradition is not always closely and faithfully followed since growing numbers of Sundanese are adopting a less traditional Islam which does not maintain many of the older traditions. Art forms Sundanese literature was basically oral, their arts architecture, music, dance, textiles, ceremonies, etc. substantially preserved traditions from an earlier phase of civilization, stretching back even to the Neolithic, and never overwhelmed as eastward, in Java, by aristocratic Hindu-Buddhist ideas. The art and culture of Sundanese people reflect historical influences by various cultures that include pre-historic native animism and shamanism traditions, ancient Hindu-Buddhist heritage, and Islamic culture. The Sundanese have very vivid, orally transmitted memories of the grand era of the Sunda kingdom. The oral tradition of Sundanese people is called Pantan Sunda, the chant of poetic verses employed for storytelling. It is the counterpart of Javanese Tembong, similar to but independent from Malay Pantan. The Pantan Sunda often recount Sundanese folklore and legends such as Sankurang, Luding Kasaring, Siung Winara, Mundinglaya Dakusuma, the tales of King Siliwingi, and popular children's folk stories such as Si Lungli. Traditional Sundanese arts include various forms of music, dance, and martial arts. The most notable types of Sundanese music are Angklung Bamboo music, Kachapi Suling music, Gamelan Daging, Rayog Sunda and Rampak Jengdang. The Angklung bamboo musical instrument is considered one of the world heritages of intangible culture. The most well-known and distinctive Sundanese dances are Japungan, a traditional social dance which is usually, but mistakenly, associated with eroticism. Other popular dances such as Merak dance describe colorful dancing peafowls. 
Sisingan dance is performed especially in the Subang area to celebrate the circumcision ritual where the boy to be circumcised is seated upon a lion figure carried by four men. Other dances such as the Pifal dance, Dui dance and Ratu Graini dance shows Javanese Mataram courtly influences. Wayang Golak puppetry is the most popular Wayang performance for Sundanese people. Many forms of Kejuan dance, literature, gamelan music and shadow puppetry Wayang Kulit, derive from the Javanese. Sundanese puppetry is more influenced by Islamic folklore than the influence of Indian epics present in Javanese versions. The Penkak Silat martial art in Sundanese tradition can be traced to the historical figure King Siluwingi of Sunda Pajajaran Kingdom, with Simand is one of the most prominent school. The recently developed Tarung Darajat is also a popular martial art in West Java. Kujing is the traditional weapon of the Sundanese people. Architecture the architecture of a Sundanese house is characterized by its functionality, simplicity, modesty, uniformity with a little details, its use of natural thatched materials, and its quite faithful adherence to the harmony with the nature and environment. Sundanese traditional houses mostly take basic form of gable roofed structure, commonly called kampung style roof, made of thatched materials, ijak black aran fibers, kirai, hate up leaves or palm leaves, covering wooden frames and beams, woven bamboo walls, and its structure is built on on short stilts. Its roof variations might include hip and gablet roof combination of gable and hip roof. The more elaborate overhanging gablet roof is called julang napak, which means bird spreading wings. Other traditional Sundanese house forms including buka pongpok, kapit gunting, jubleg nangkub, badak hue, tagog anjing, and prahu kemorib, next to houses, rice barn are called luit in Sundanese, is also an essential structure in traditional Sundanese agricultural community. Luit is especially important during sarantan harvest ceremony. Cuisine Sundanese cuisine is one of the most popular traditional food in Indonesia, and it is also easily found in most Indonesian cities. The Sundanese food is characterized by its freshness, the famous lalab, raw vegetables salad, eaten with sambal, chili paste, and also karatik peanuts paste, demonstrate the Sundanese fondness for fresh raw vegetables. Similar to other ethnic groups in Indonesia, Sundanese people eat rice for almost every meal. The Sundanese like to say, if you have not eaten rice, then you have not eaten at all. Rice is prepared in hundreds of different ways. However, it is simple steamed rice that serves as the centerpiece of all meals. Next to steamed rice, the side dishes of vegetables, fish, or meat are added to provide variety of taste as well as for protein, mineral and nutrient intake. These side dishes are grilled, fried, steamed or boiled and spiced with any combination of garlic, galangal, a plant of the ginger family, turmeric, coriander, ginger, and lemongrass. The herb-rich food wrapped and cooked inside banana leaf called pepis Sundanese pays, is popular among Sundanese people. Pepis are available in many varieties according to its ingredients, carp fish, anchovies, minced meat with eggs, mushroom, tofu or onkam. Onkam is a popular foodstuff within Sundanese cuisine, just like its counterpart, tempeh, is popular among Javanese people. Usually the food itself is not too spicy, but it is served with a very hot sauce made by grinding chili peppers and garlic together. On the coast, saltwater fish are common, in the mountains, fish tend to be either pond-raised carp or goldfish. A well-known Sundanese dish is lalapan, which consists only of raw vegetables, such as papaya leaves, cucumber, eggplant, and bitter melon. In general, Sundanese food tastes rich and savory, but not as tangy as padang food, nor as sweet as Javanese food. Occupations The traditional occupation of Sundanese people is agricultural, especially rice cultivation. Sundanese culture and tradition are usually centered around the agricultural cycle. Festivities such as the Sarantan Harvest Ceremony are held in high importance, especially in the traditional Sundanese community in Cipta Geller Village, Sisolik, Sukabumi, Sindang Barang, Pasir Yura Village, Tamansari, Bogor, and the traditional Sundanese community in Sigugor Kuningan. The typical Sundanese luit rice barn is an important part of traditional Sundanese villages. It is held in high esteem as the symbol of wealth and welfare. Since early times, Sundanese have predominantly been farmers. 
They tend to be reluctant to be government officers or legislators. Next to agriculture, Sundanese people often choose business and trade to make a living, although mostly are traditional entrepreneurships, such as a traveling food or drink vendors, establishing modest warung, food stall, or restaurant, as the vendor of daily consumers' goods or open a modest barber shop. Their affinity for establishing and running small-scale entrepreneurship is most likely contributed by Sundanese tendency to be independent, carefree, egalitarian, individualistic and optimistic. They seem to abhor the rigid structure and rule of government offices. Several traditional traveling food vendors and food stalls such as Somai, Gado Gado and Karadik, Nasi Goreng, Chendal, Bubor Ayam, Roti Bakar, Grilled Bread, Bubor Kakang Hiu, Green Beans Kanji, and Indomie Instant Noodle Stall are notably run by Sundanese. Nevertheless, there are numbers of Sundanese that successfully carved their career as intellectuals or politicians in national politics, government offices and military positions. Some notable Sundanese has gained positions in Indonesian government as governor, municipal major, vice president and state ministers, also as officers and general in Indonesian military. Sundanese also popularly known as cheerful and mercurial folks, as they love to joke and tease around. The Wayang Golik art form of Sepet, Dawala, and Garing Punakawan character clearly demonstrate Sundanese quirky side. Some Sundanese might find art and culture as their passion and become artists, either fine art, musics or performing art. Today, there are a number of Sundanese involved in the music and entertainment industry, with some of Indonesia's most famous singers, musicians, composers, cinema directors, film and Sinetron's actors being of Sundanese origin. Notable people Notable Sundanese that being recognized as Indonesian national heroes among others are Dewi Sardaka that fought for equality for women education, and Indonesian statesmen such as Oto Iskander D. Nada and Juanda Kartawijaja. Popular former governor of Jakarta Ali Sadikin, ex-vice president Umar Wirahadakusuma, and former defense minister Agam Gameler, and ministers of foreign affairs such as Mokhtar Kusumatmaja, Hassan Wairajuda and Marty Natalagawa, Mutia Hafid are among notable Sundanese on politics field. Ajip Rozidi and Akdayat Karta Miharja are among Indonesian distinguished poets and writers. Today, in modern Indonesian music and entertainment industry, there are large numbers of Sundanese artists that has become Indonesia's most famous singers, musicians, composers, cinema directors, film and sinetrons, TV soap drama, actors. Famous Dangdut singers Roma Arama, Elvi Sukaesa and Ayu Ting Ting, musicians and composers such as Erwin Gutawa and singers such as Rokaya, Hedi Koz Endang, Bina Pandawanada, Nikki Astria, Nike Ardila, Rosa, Gita Gutawa and popular celebrity Sayarini, Indonesian Sinetrons actors such as Rafi Ahmad, Jihan Fahira and Asmaranda Zantman, also film director Nia Dinata, are among artists of Sundanese background. Famous Wayang Golik puppet master was ASEP Sunandar Sunaria, while Sewell, Jojon and Kong Ibing are popular comedian. On the sports field, Indonesian athletes of Sundanese background are badminton Olympic gold medalist Taufik Hidayat and Ricky Subaha. See also Sunda Kingdom Tarumanagara Kingdom Salakanagara Kingdom Bunny culture Sunda Wivitan Kidding Sunda List of Sundanese people Badwi people References Further reading Taylor, Jean Gelman, Indonesia, New Haven and London, Yale University Press ISBN 0-300-10518-5 Hefner, Robert, 1997, Java's Five Regional Cultures, taken from OE, Eric, Editor, 1997. Java, Singapore, Perry Plus Editions. pp. 58-61. ISBN 962-593-244-5. CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List, Link.